What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. Part two coming at you here of this insane backyard transformation. In this video, we're gonna go over helical pile installation. We're gonna be embedding those helical piles into the slab that the sunroom is gonna be built on top of. We're also gonna get into framing a second story balcony deck. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. We got helical piles going in here and we need everything to be at a very specific height because they're gonna be embedded in this concrete slab. And we need four inches of embedment from the edge underneath and over top of each pile. So what we did, we have these little stakes here. They're about a foot away from our mark where the pile is gonna go. But these are all set at our elevation for reference. This is the height that we need the top of the pile to be. And you can see, got one pile in here and here, is the head that's gonna go on it. It's a fixed head with two pieces of rebar welded into it. That is gonna be embedded in the slab and that's gonna act as our footing for our structure. All right, so you saw we got the helical piles in. Now we've got a lumber delivery. We also got a gas line in, but I'll show you more about that in a minute. Look at this big old load. So yesterday we had our plumbers out here and we ran our gas lines. We have two gas lines going in here, both coming off the meter. This one here is gonna be for a fireplace inside of our sunroom. And then we also have a fire pit over here. All we had to do was trench this out. I'll show you a little bit about the connections. I'm not a plumber, so take this all with a grain of salt. We always sub this out to a qualified professional, but uh, I'll show you just the general idea of what we have here. So we have our gas line right here. This one is for the fire pit. And you can see it's just a gas riser and then some poly pipe. Come check this out, because we just passed our inspection. What they want to see is this thing pumps with air and holding pressure. So it's been holding at 15 pounds, perfect. And uh, we have tracer wire on there. This pipe is a little bit bigger than our fireplace because this is going to be 240,000 BTUs. Our fireplace is only 28,000, so smaller pipe on that side. And let me show you how they hooked it up into the gas meter. Here's our gas meter, and this is where the connection is made. Most of the time, we're gonna make our connection at the gas meter because everything that's ran inside the house, even if there is piping nearby, it's not really rated for all the stuff that we're gonna be putting on additionally. So we have the two risers coming out here. They did a really nice job of tying this in. We have two shutoff valves. Now that we've passed inspection, it's holding pressure. We can backfill all of this and move forward. Plumbers will be back out once we're ready to install our fixtures. And what do we got going on? We got an upper deck. This is where I used to always hit them in Little League. So first thing we had to do is I had to take off some siding. So that lets me see the framing. I can see the floor framing because we are taking that window out and making it another door. Yep. That wasn't in the rendering, and I'm surprised how many people noticed <laughs> right? that. They're like, why is there a door there? I forgot to put it in the rendering, sorry. This is gonna be a door. You're not gonna have to climb out the window onto this, nope. this deck. So, what, what's what's first here? Looks like we've got two layers of sheathing here. Look at that, you see that? We got a little got OSB little behind. No, that's that's probably, packing out. That's probably the rim. Yep. Oh, because it's engineered. Engineered. Yep. And then they cut the floor sheathing just a little bit back so it didn't come into play with the sheathing. And okay. Then the sheathing over top of it. Good move. Great move. So what's what's step one? 
For step one is I'm gonna to talk to Sean to see if the homeowners are home because he can go inside and really see where the floor is inside. This is technically gonna be a freestanding, self-supported structure because we have this cantilever on the second floor. You can't structurally attach something to bear load no, on this no, no. because it's already cantilevering past this wall. We are gonna attach a ledger board just to start straight, but that's gonna be packed out to a triple two by 10, and there will be posts that go directly down to our helical piles. So it will be self-supported, but we're gonna have that attachment to the house that's gonna help with some sway, and it's gonna make it a little bit easier to get started, so. Yep. We'll go from there. So do you wanna go inside? Me? Yeah. Uh, what do you want me to do? I want, I'm gonna hand you the level, and we're yep. gonna level this, and you're gonna measure down. Yeah, the level and I'm going to measure down and transfer the mark just to see where we're at. Okay. 27 and 3 quarter. Right there. Looks like they just have hardwood or carpeting there. Does it look like hardwood or carpet? <laughs> yeah, what does it look like? <laughs> it looks like hardwood. All right, cool. It looks How do like, I confirm? It looks like they it's 3 quarters above the sump floor. Okay. We're good. Perfect. We want the door on the sub floor. This is going to be a really nice to walk out of here. So we want to be like an inch. And the door on the sub floor. This is going to be really nice. Oh, they're going to be able to look out on the pool. Oh, forget about it. This is such a oh. nice, like, little Romeo and Juliet moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Montague. <laughs> Capulet. <laughs> Ant, look. What? What is that? What do you got Whoa. there? Dude. And then just rip it in half. Because how wide is it? Three feet? Yeah, it looks that. Six, six foot six, seven feet. And then just rip it in half. Okay. Do you need help with that? <laughs> Me? <laughs> no. I just, I'm reading a book right now and says, make sure you thoroughly screen your employees. Once we have the ledger height figured out, it's pretty simple from there. We're putting a peel and stick membrane behind the ledger board. And again, this isn't a true ledger board because it's not gonna be structurally dependent on the house. We're just doing this so it gives it a little bit more lateral stability and it's going to be easier to figure out that height. So we're laminating that multi-ply beam right now and then we can just slide the six bys underneath of that running down to our helical piles. Once we have that, we can install our two end joists, make sure they're coming off square from our ledger. And then you can see we have those two by fours running down to the ground. That's going to prop it level. Put a rim on and then we can slide six bys under the front takes a lot of the guesswork out of it once we have the perimeter framed up it's pretty simple from there We'll just pre-cut our joists, tack them in there, and then we'll go back and install joist hangers because we do have flush beams on both sides. Now you can see Tony going around with a level. He's just planing down the joist, making sure it's nice and flat. And we'll finish it off by taping all of our multi-ply beams. Looks good. How's the tech look? <laughs> Deck looks all right, yeah. Well, we got our deck framed out here and we're ready to start on this decorator's decking. Yeah, buddy. I love how we uh, decided to do this a flush beam. Yes. We've got it all taped. It uh, it just looks really clean from the outside. We yeah, just have that little that. profile, yep. 10 inches, looks beautiful. But we're ready to start on our decking. We sure are. This no, is gonna fly. No, why we're ready? Why? Because we use Goliath Tech Helical Piles. Because we use Goliath Tech Helical Piles and we didn't have to wait for the inspector. Nope. And uh, I don't think he's gonna, you know, bust our stones for decking on top. You can see no, everything can see from, everything underneath. from underneath. If he wants to bust stones about that, I'll bust his stones. And I'll tell him to kick rocks. <laughs> yeah. This balcony is coming off the master bedroom. But this there's is a window. Oh, oh yeah, we gotta put a door in. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
But I figured this is going to be a really long project. It'd be nice to give them one space where they can come out, you know, each day. They can look at the progress. <coughs> <laughs> you all right? Trying to hold it in. <laughs> Trying to hold that one in, guys. Sorry. What? Call. Oh. All right, so we're ready to go. Um, hey, what would win in a race? A goat or a pie cost? A goat or a what? A pie cost. What's a pie cost? <laughs> About six bucks. <laughs> 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 all right, you need me? No. Okay. So looky here, we got the decking down. And this is a window, so you can't get onto the deck. So we have to turn this window into a door. So I'm just doing a prep demo, getting everything off. Um, yeah, we'll pop the window out, we'll reframe it. But you're gonna have to wait for the next vlog to see us get this door in. We're also gonna be moving on to prepping and pouring our concrete slab for the sunroom. We have another concrete slab over here for a hot tub. Whole bunch of really cool stuff coming at you. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned, and until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.